You know, Crazy Corp here, and I'm going to try and talk to you a little bit about how America has changed in the last 50-some years. In the 60s, there were hippies. In the 50s, there were beatniks, people like Lenny Bruce. Um, those people, a lot of you don't know, but those people affected the way this country reacts in a lot of ways and about a lot of things. Not many people understand that the peace movement that started in the 60s because of the Vietnam War led to a lot of freedoms that you have today. Did you know that in the 50s and 60s it was illegal for men to have sex with each other? Now, in 2018, they can get married. Did you know that when marijuana was declared illegal in 1936, I think it was Harry Anslinger that led the crusade, the whole purpose for that was because DuPont family had developed kerosene and nylon, and they wanted to get rid of the competition, which was hemp oil and hemp fiber. So the easiest way to do that, they'll just make marijuana illegal. Same as when they made cocaine illegal. It's all heroin was illegal. Opium was illegal. They made all of it illegal. 1936, you would have thought, since they had just done prohibition and had just got rid of prohibition because of all the crime it caused, that they would have figured out that the same thing was going to happen with, with uh, pot. Uh, now we have eight states that have legalized recreational marijuana. There's 14 that have medical marijuana. Uh, they're discovering that, med that marijuana cures cancer, it stops pain, there's a lot of things that it does. But they still, there's those people that don't want you to have marijuana. Okay. There are problems with the drug. There's problems with any drug. There's problems with alcohol. Too many people do things with alcohol that they wouldn't normally do without alcohol. It destroys lives, it destroys families. The same can't be said for pot. Although with the higher, stronger strains now, it does affect a lot of people in different ways than it did ever before. So there are pros and cons to everything. But when you legislate morality, everybody loses. Even if you don't like the idea or the concept of pot, you should like the idea and concept of letting people choose their own vices. Personally, when I first started smoking pot, and that was in 1965, or 66, somewhere around there, more than 50 years ago, it was because I didn't want to drink. I didn't want alcohol because I saw what it did to my family. I saw what it did to other people. It was a destructive drug. On the other hand, with pot, I didn't see that. People would get high and not do anything. They'd sit around and talk and joke and make and have fun. But they didn't go get in their cars and drive around and be crazy. UCLA did a study on pot and driving and did the study three times because the government refused to believe their results. When you smoke pot, you drive slower and you drive safer. Proven fact. That's all there is to it. They know that. The stronger they that they have now, the stronger varieties and like that, and the way that they process it, it will probably not hold true with that because it's too strong and you shouldn't drive. You shouldn't operate machinery. You shouldn't do anything when you're under the influence of a drug. Nothing that's going to affect your life or the lives of others. That's just common sense. However, people need to understand and that's why in the last book that I've written, and which I'm still writing on further volumes of, I discuss pot. I discuss how it was, how it, it is, and where it's going. Um, it's not the primary motive, but it is a book on pot. Uh, the book changes as time and I changed. You'll learn things, you'll know things, you'll laugh, You'll cry. But when I tell you some of the stories, 
all I really want you to do is think. I'm not advocating the use of marijuana. I am not advocating the use of any drug. I'm merely telling you, this is what happened to me. Trying to turn the machine off, and I doesn't want to do it.